Miss B here with another lesson. Our next series we're going to be kicking off is called Disciple Me. And so today we're in lesson one of that, and we're going to be talking about repenting. So I want you guys to think, use your noggins for a second, get a brain blast. Has anyone ever heard of the word repent? Even if you don't know what it means, but have you heard the word repent? Sure, some of us maybe have. Do we know what the word repent means? That might be a little bit harder, right? When we repent from our sins, from the wrong things we do in the eyes of God, it means to turn away from them. We're going to turn our backs to sin and we're going to go the other way and follow Jesus. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we dive in, I want you guys to think for a second, what makes a really good action movie? Is it the big stunts, like the blowing up of stuff and people jumping from wall to wall? Is it like the special effects and the music? Maybe it's the explosions or cars jumping over giant bridges, or maybe the stuntmen who fall off of buildings, all these different things. But maybe it's not necessarily all of these stunts or these special effects. Maybe it's the good guys. Maybe it's like the secret agents, like maybe James Bond or maybe Spider-Man, and he always has something funny to say when he captures the villains. Or maybe it's like a lightsaber wielding guy, like Rey from Star Wars, who finds her strength and makes, it, makes us cheer. Any of those? Maybe, all of these are fun in action movies, right? But sometimes what makes a great action movie or even movie in general, even a kid's movie, sometimes is the villain. I know, what? So, is the villain. Sometimes the bigger and badder and meaner the villain, the more you wanna see them stopped, right? You get more into the movie like, what is the good guy gonna do? But, is there anybody bigger and badder and even scarier than maybe Thanos? With, he has all of the rings on the Avengers? I'm not sure. So we may cheer against them, right? We wanna cheer for the good guys, but sometimes we're a little bit of a fan of the villains. They make the action movies scary. They make them exciting, they make them dangerous, right? They put the excitement into all of these action-packed thrillers. And sometimes, have you guys seen the movie Despicable Me? I'm sure we have with the little minions, right? In Despicable Me, we notice that there's the villain and he makes us cheer for him when they change and they choose to do the right thing. And that's sort of like in the Bible when we learn about repenting. We turn our backs against the, the bad thing and the wrong thing and we choose to do the right thing and follow Jesus. So in Despicable Me, we're introduced to a super villain, right? And he wants to show the world that he is the best at being the bad guy. He's a brilliant inventor, he uses his noggin, he invents all these really cool things, and he has some pretty not so good plans, right, in the works. But then something happens. Can you guys think of what happens to him in Despicable Me? He meets three little girls, or in his words, girls, who wants to change his life. And in the end, he decides he no longer wants to be known for doing things that are bad. His little girls inspire him to be good. So not every action movie necessarily shows us a villain who changes their ways, but Despicable Me is one of those that reminds us that even the worst, nastiest, meanest, most evil ha scientists, even they can change for the good. And the Bible teaches us this over and over and over and over and over and over again, as well in today's story that we're gonna talk about, about a man named Zacchaeus. Can you guys try to say that? Zacchaeus, right? A little bit of a long name. So we're going to be in the book of Luke. This is in the New Testament, chapter 19, and we're going to read verses 1 through 9. Handy dandy Bible if you have it. If not, they, it will be on the screen. So Zacchaeus, the tax collector. So Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was very wealthy. That means he had lots and lots of monies. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was a little man, he was very short, a little peewee man. He was very short. He could not see over all these people. Have you guys ever been in school, maybe for an assembly or even at church or any event, and you just can't see? And sometimes maybe your parents or siblings may put you on their shoulders. That was what's going on with Zacchaeus. He was just a little man and he couldn't see over all the people, right? So Zacchaeus, he ran ahead of everybody, and you know what he did? He didn't get in front of them, but he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see ahead of him, and so that way he could see Jesus coming all the way down the way, because the tree is pretty high up, right? So he climbs a tree, 
he'll be able to see a lot of things that not everybody can. So when Jesus reached the spot where he was going, he looked up and he said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus came down at once because if Jesus tells you to come out of a tree, you better get out of that tree. So Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus gladly. All the people saw this and they began to mutter, he has gone to go to be a guest of a sinner? Because back then, tax collectors were looked down upon, right? They were not who you wanted to be seen with. But Jesus decided he was going to stay with Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus stood up and he said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here I am, and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, which tax collectors usually did, I will pay it back four times the amount. So he's going to pay them back even more than he cheated them or even took from them. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek to save the lost. So we see here that Zacchaeus maybe wasn't a super villain, right? He wasn't some big, really strong guy. He was a little wee little man, right? He didn't have an evil lair or any minions, but Zacchaeus wasn't a man known for kindness or generosity. Tax collectors were well-known villains in the Bible days. They stole from and they cheated everyone. And they kept, they kept lots of stolen money for themselves. But what happened when Zacchaeus learned that Jesus loved him? Just like Gru, he was changed. Zacchaeus gave his life to Jesus. He repented of all the wrong he had done. And what else did he say? Besides being sorry for what he did, I want you guys, guys to notice there was an action behind that. He said he was going to pay back, not just what he took, but four times. So a lot of the time when we do things wrong, we're taught to always say, I'm sorry, right? And on Sundays, you guys know very good and well, if something is wrong and we talk to Miss B, I always tell you, I want to see that you're sorry. I don't just want to hear it. So we have to show with our actions that we're sorry. And Zacchaeus did just that by saying he's going to pay these people back, not just once or twice, but four times over right? So Zacchaeus repented of all the wrong he had done, and a bad man known for dishonesty decided to change his ways and do good. And Jesus wants us to do the same exact thing and wants the same, same change in not just my heart and your heart and mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and aunt and uncle and brother and sister, not just our hearts, but everyone's heart, no matter who we are, no matter where we are. Jesus can help us turn away from sin, turn our back to it, that's sin, we're going to turn our back, we're going to turn away from it and choose to follow Jesus. So when he tells us, hey, get out of that tree, we're going to make sure we climb out of that tree. So sometimes it's kind of hard to imagine that bad people really turn away from evil, right? Sometimes we may have had someone in our class who was mean for all these years, and then all of a sudden they're trying to do better, and Maybe we're a little confused because they have five years of being the class bully and now there's one year of them trying to be good and sometimes it's hard to really believe they're trying to be good. But it's happened all through history and when people meet Jesus, he does a change of heart and he can, the Holy Spirit will convict them to let them know what they're doing is wrong. So in the Bible, we see men like Zacchaeus and if we remember the story of Saul, who they were disobeying God and even Saul was killing Christians, right? But... They meet Jesus, and at this point, they change. And Zacchaeus gave the money back with interest. That was the four times over. And Saul turned from persecuting Christians to becoming a leader in Christ's church. In more recent times, we have like a story of Chuck Colson. Chuck Colson was the right man to former President Nixon, right? Many, many, many years ago. Colson helped the president to break the law. And many people saw Colson and the president as villains right? Colson went to prison for his actions, but before he went to jail, Chuck Colson decided to give his life to Jesus, and he began to read the Bible and study it, and Jesus ended up changing his life for the better. So when Chuck Colson left prison, he turned away from all his crooked pursuits and all the lies and cheating, and he created a ministry that ended up touching thousands of lives. Do you know what that ministry does? It's called Prison Fellowship. And their purpose is to share the love of Jesus with prisoners and people who are in jail and families that they left behind. Sometimes it's not easy for a lot of people to do that. So because Chuck Colson was changed by the Bible and by Jesus, 
he has now ministered to thousands of prisoners, hopefully bringing them and their heart to a change to, for Jesus as well. So no matter what those people have done, God still loves them. Even when it's really hard for us to love them, God still loves them, right? And he wants to help them turn away from their sin. So I want you guys to think in your noggin, big brain energy. I want you to think, who can help us turn away from sin? Is it the villain from Despicable Me? Probably not. Is it Spider-Man? Probably not. But if you're guessing Jesus, you are 100,000% correct. And Jesus wants to help all of us turn away from our sin because we can't do it on our own. Our flesh wants us to fail. It's really hard to always do the right thing. But Jesus and the Holy Spirit are what lead us to do the right things and turn away from sin. So what I want us to do is we're going to pray that God helps us turn away from sin and to recognize the sin that we should turn away from, whether it's not listening to our parents, whether it might be lying, whether it might be being mean sometimes or being quick to anger because that's not a fruit of the Spirit, whatever it may be. So what I'm going to have us is open your hands, bring them up front, close to your heart, and we're going to bow our head and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for every child and even parent watching this, God. Um, thank you, Lord, just for forgiving us of our sins, no matter what we do or how many times we do it, God. Please help us to recognize the sins that we commit, whether we commit them knowingly or even unknowingly, because that happens, Lord. Um, I pray that you help us to know that you can change not just our hearts, but other people's hearts, Lord, and that you would help us to love others just the way you did, and that where there is sin in our lives, that you would come in and help us clean it out. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Bye.